Chloe ulti is irritating to deal with. And what? Evelyn actually being picked out at the same time. So Evelyn being banned out. Um, targeted, not really. Mm, and I guess they don't want toys to have it. Well, they should be banned Oriana then. Uh, I, I don't think so. Like, yeah, no, like he's going to choose Oriana. I mean, like, it's a respect ban. You know, yeah. you don't give that to toys, so to speak. Even though it's now the pre season three, you know, AP champions are weaker, but still. Just but but still, you don't want to give them, I mean, what they were famous for. Mm -hmm. no. And Nidali is definitely one of those things. <laughs> yes, Take away from Stanley. Well. So we can see the bans coming out of MLE is targeted slightly to TBA. I think maybe because they have seen toys using Evelyn quite a bit, so they're just wary about it. Evelyn as Assassin is much harder to deal with. Because you can't see her in terms of Oriana, you have the side wall. I mean, you can see her you can just see her moving around, but Kazix is already yeah. picked out, so um, definitely want to bring up ban out Kazix out there. Imagine toys with Kazix. I would she say that TP is going to go for the same style because once again they ban Lee Sin, Amumu, and Twister Fate. Yeah. Where I mean, they, they could first pick Twister Fate if they wanted to, but I suppose they're going to opt for different champion because we did see previously they were using previous game they were using Twister Fate. Yep, but it looks like it's going to be a Nunu pickup though. Um, okay, so the Blood Ball is definitely going to help push down the towers even more quickly. And uh, yeah, Dalbelief says that, why isn't Nunu nerfed yet so far? <laughs> uh, I, I simply think that it's very, I, I wouldn't say overpowered, it's very um, in trend now for two reasons. One, because of the attack speed nerf that came across in the Season 3 uh, pre-season patch. And for the fact that the attack speed items uh, also receive uh, somewhat of a nerf out there. So, Nunu's Blood Boil all of a sudden seems really, really potent and like uh, something that everybody's fighting over. But we do see Caitlyn already being picked up though. Hmm. Quite weird to first pick an AD carry in my personal yeah. opinion. Like, you, you don't really want to get countered out there. You don't have your, you know, confirmed support that you want. I mean, but you, you can't really counter Caitlyn to just be in the laning phase. She is like the best AD carry. The Similar rage, the poke, mm -hmm. the headshot that comes out of I mean, her passive is really good. Yes. Her trap that she can put down um, at the same time. Uh, Jarvan, Ash, I'm not so sure about Ash to be honest. Jarvan is yeah. actually a very strong uh, AD carry, but she, has, she lacks in mobility, the main I mean, flaw. Th that is true, but okay, if you're going to compare just purely Caitlyn to Ash, um, isn't Ash going to lose out relatively like. Well, not really. When the, when the, when the level starts stacking up, when Wally starts taking up in level as well, when you up the skill, she has a quite good poke as well okay. for Ash. Like, the Wally is very easy to hit and miss at the same time, but once it hits, it does a lot of damage. But pure over Peacemaker is easier to dodge actually in comparison to Wally. Because it's simply one narrow. And you can see the animation coming out, like Caitlyn pointing the gun towards you. So definitely it takes up much more time, but Wally is just arrows flying, flying out. Flying arrow in an arc it's anyhow. Very, yep. very far range, it's easy to poke. And I wouldn't say that definitely will not lose out as much. Maybe the first three levels, like, they get poked a bit more overall. But once she gets the body to level two and level three, she'll be able to fight back. Definitely. But we also see the Nunu and Kale pick up by Taipei Assassins there. Jeez. Uh, we, we did see how well Kale worked out in the previous game before the Kuala Hunters. Will it work out just as well for the Taipei Assassins? I believe so. Um, I, I don't know if this is like showing the finger to Taipei Assassins, but it looks like Oriana might be picked up by Manila Eagles. No, They're going to show toys how to play Oriana. Definitely not, but we did see that MLE has been playing Oriana quite a bit in yeah. the team compositions, definitely. And with Lulu, Java, and Oriana, it's going to work out quite well. This is the, the shield composition. <laughs> I mean, aside, no. aside Ash, if Ash was Urgot, it would be a shield composition right there. Well, Ash just takes barrier, and then there's a shield comp, okay? Close enough to <laughs> We're going to see the last two pickups by Typhi Assassins. Um, it looks like this would be their top laner unless Kale is going to their top. Um, I believe Kale is definitely going to mid. Oh, so wait. Nunu? Might be a jungle Nunu. A jungle? Oh, wow. Oh, uh, Not sure if trolling or true. <laughs> lock in onto Tarek already though, but... Oh, come on, lock in Severe, please. Just lock in Severe. Okay. So Severe is going to go top, and then I think Nunu is going to go jungle, and Tarek is going to go with Caitlyn to the bottom. No, uh, no. Caitlyn will go top, Severe and Tarek will stay together, Kale will go mid. No, there's going to be a lane swap somewhere definitely with this lineup. It's going to be like continuous lane swaps, I would say. Like, oh, there's could... going to be the complete rotation of once they bring out one tower, they're going to move to the next and move to the next. Mm, it, it's the, it, let's oh, see, wow. Tarek can be a jungler as well, and definitely is very yes. strong. 
we have to say. So Will Tarek become the jungler? Does Tarek become the jungler is the question. And then is it going oh. to be Toys uh, using Kale at top? And then Nunu Kidney once again in the mid lane, terrorizing whoever is there. That could very well and be. And then Sibyl will be able to hold on on herself as Stanley with the spell shield, definitely. Another interesting thing is Akali possibly being picked up the Akali or Katarina. Uh, Katarina, in fact, locked in, so. Once again, wrong. Oh. MLB has been using Katarina with the teleport, but. Not, not being able to take much advantage of the teleport, though. That's. Yes. That's the only thing that did not work out into their favour in the previous matches. However, in this case, I don't think so it will work out at the same time because of the fact of all these lane swaps that the Type A is going to come up with. And it's actually going to be Stanley taking Caitlyn. And he is going to be the solo lane. So he looks like he's going to go up to the top. Uh, Bebe and Dinta will be going possibly to the what traditionally we call the bottom. Uh, Twice going to be made with Kale and Lil Wall is going to be jungling with Nunu. It's not going to be a traditional definitely. It's going to be something very different and the guess going to move everything around. Because Nunu with the jungle, where whichever lane he goes and gang with the Blood Boy, he's going to help the lane now. Kale with the attack from his abilities and the long range. Civil as well. I mean, let's put it this way. Nunu comes and gangs the middle lane. Not only does he ice ball and then there's a slow coming up from Toys. It, it, it's going to be devastating to be honest. He goes to the bottom lane, he has Tarek that can stun, we have Severe that can spell chill away, anything that goes wrong. Um, it, it, I, I would say it's going to be quite devastating. I mean, each lane has something working for them. Caitlyn in the top lane has her traps, so if anybody walks into the traps, we have Lil Boss that can come in and possibly make something happen. But let's talk about MLE just for a moment here. Um, Ash, Javan, Oriana, Lulu, Katarina. Once again, their team comm right now is very team fight oriented. And it is not team fight oriented at all for the side of Type Assassins. I would say it's more of a lane pushing composition. It's a lane push as well as a poke composition, definitely. It's a boomerang blade it's like and kill. Lane, I would say lane push, and the moment you catch one person out, the person is instant dead. With the stunts and slows that they have out there. They, they would be able to, you know, confirm each kill that comes out. So it's going to be a matter of two things. How well Emily can hold oh. down each lane and how aggressive Type S decides to be. But we're going to go into game right now. Nope. See, oh, oh, the magic has the happened. The magic has happened. happened. You. Yes. Yes. Tables has <laughs> cursed me. No. <laughs> yes, sir. I finally feel it. Oh. I'm being favoured slightly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair treatment right there from the game, throwing both of us. Oh, well. <laughs> Every time you want to move into the game, there's going to be a pause, definitely. Yeah, but it, look, uh, it looks like a very quick pickup. So, Caitlyn and Severe both starting with Doran's Blade. I mean, definitely they do not need to start with anything else because um, it's just headshots. No, I'm just joking. I mean, in the lane sustain-wise right now, Kaylee with the maximum range and the side of MLE, they're going to go quite close range. If And with the overall lane starts happening, I have no idea what's going to happen. I think Kaylee should go mid, Kill should go top. Or maybe it's a man dash of what? <laughs> Throw the dice and see where you land. Like, oh, that's the lane you should go. The dice, like, Amber. Amber, how is MLE going to respond to this? Is it going to be fast enough? Will they be able to, to take advantage of this? I, I would say this is the, the ultimate test of communication. <laughs> and the ultimate test as a leader making the calls. Because if they can't make the calls, they're going to fall behind. Uh, we're going to see what, what's happening with the pause on the other side there. Um, no real information coming out on the other end there, but... Um, the severe, Caitlyn... Well, technically, they, they have no superior tanks um, outright, but... tanks intervention. I mean, tuning two seconds to three seconds, they have <laughs> everything as AD carries. Uh, I mean, it's, it's well, a I mean, you only can protect one person, so... Hey, it's enough. Do? You're gonna dive on one AD carry. If you dive on the Sevilla, Sevilla might spell, shell, spell shell and flash away, then change target to KD and then intervention. Then you're gonna change target to Sevilla, and Sevilla's gonna unalt it right away. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry speaking too fast, but you know, I mean, the, I'm just excited to see the overall composition. It's like, it, it's gonna, gonna be, be a third boy, a single target stun from Tyreek, Caliber Knight running away, a Sevilla's ultimate, the spell shell from Sevilla, intervention from KO coming out, it's like, who are they going to aim? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be this mad, mad merry-go-round dash of like what's going yeah. on. And if the dive does happen for the side of NLE and Javan just flag toss in the combination and then does use Cataclysm, is he going to be able to catch everyone? Or are they going to be like, Blood Boy? Everybody runs away on like different Yeah, only one person is caught and when Alti doesn't hit onto anyone, Lulu's Alti can't catch anyone. Katarina is like, where am I supposed to go? She jumps in Death Lotus. Where's everyone? Everyone just disperse. Yeah. Um, that's why, okay, so I mean, 
it looks like we are heavily, heavily favoring TPA in this game. Correct what? me, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Team Com wise, in terms of if they do well in lane and transitions to slightly mid game, no towers being taken down, and MOE focus onto the mid lane, they will have an advantage. But with the Team Com, TPA has brought up. I don't think that's going to happen. It's going to be, especially if a gang does happen onto Katarina, it's going to be a stun, ice ball, boomerang blade. The end of that's, it. That's that's estimated. Or it can happen if it goes to other lanes with Lulu and Ash, it's going to be the same thing where a summer spells will definitely be burned and TB can be like, okay, Lulu can just wait at the side. He has a blood ball, he has a snowball. He's just going to like, just move around. Yeah. So apparently the chat was talking about my Facebook post before this. Sorry to cut you off there. But yeah, I, I did actually check the chat for a while. Um guys, Sorry. since we still are going in the pause, um ask us anything you want on either one of the chats, either Twitch chat, YouTube chat, or the RC chat, uh, we'll answer you guys. Okay, so continue. You will answer, I'll be like I mean I'm so sad right now, you know, always cutting me off for no reason. I'm gonna cry, cry in the corner, you know, I should do you this. You gotta cry in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a bamboo tablet and hides behind it, really. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. So, I mean, this is, as I'm mentioning, all exciting things going to happen. MLE, overall stronger team composition as well with the stuns coming out. But mobility, running around, is in much favoured for the side of TPA. And as well as negating things from happening, disengaging, forcing Ultimates to miss, I think TPA will have a very good advantage. Yes. The, the advantage is heaven to the other side there. Apparently, Light Shadow says, I love your t shirt, Teddy, so okay. Uh, <laughs> you're wearing a pink. It's not pink. It, it looks pink on the stream, don't it's you? It's totally <laughs> not pink, okay? It's actually dark red. It's more maroonish, I suppose. It, it, it's a maroon, yes. Uh, Teddy's trying to tell us a little bit about himself there. Uh -huh. um, People ask, what's the green things on my Facebook post? Um, actually, somebody said the answer already, so look through the comments on the Facebook post that you figure it out. What's it there? We are going to go into a game right now. It is going to be the Typhoon Assassins versus the Manila Eagles. So let's go. Uh, people are saying it's magenta, it's purple. God, people are still caught up about your shirt color. color. Apparently, the lighting makes it look weird. Well, we yeah. are seeing a lot of pinks actually coming down from the Manila Eagles side. Uh, and very one single targeted pink coming out from the Taipei Assassins. So possibly going to be an evade on the other side there, or it's going to be a ward out. Not sure what's happening here <laughs> with 30 percent, but the ward already does. That's get put down. Oh well, um, going back into game here while Tiny Tibbers figures out what's going on with his keyboard, we do see that the earlier war already been planted by the Taipei Assassins out there, but the Manila Eagles already will know that they have gone out there, so they're going to be a little bit uh, wary of where they have actually walked to, and they actually know what's going, to, going on there. Um, so it looks like it's going to be relatively safe for the set of Manila Eagles going on to the other end, and... And the other thing also to note here is that as we're about to begin the game, everybody's perfectly on their side. So nobody's actually going to go out to be completely insane out there. Uh, we are looking at the game and it's quite interesting in terms of items pick up. Ash as well got the Doran's Blade. Uh, we do know that if you're continuously auto-attacking, it works very well, especially with the amount of life you gain per hit uh, with the new Doran's Blade. I mean, it doesn't heal as fast as a potion, but at least you're always going to have it. Yep, you always get incremental gain out there, which is good. Uh, for the bottom lane, it works well for typing Assassin Severe and Tarek getting um, the uh, earlier double golems out there. Ward being planted by Tarek. It's quite interesting. Nunu started with Machete's Blade. Um, four health potions. For five health potions, he used one already. It's, gonna, cookie, it's a basic jungle build. Cookie plus... <laughs> Um, the oh, he for I've I've what? seen uh, little boss runes and masteries for the side of his masteries when he plays Olaf and Nunu because you know he doesn't need that much damage and tankiness well, because the champion is much tanky really needs mana regeneration and mobility so to speak he actually goes for 15, 15, 15 on defensive and 15, 15 on utility, uh, utility. so that's why he gets extra ward and extra biscuit oh so little he, panda and toys look at that oh force to flash away the little panda toys being ballsy right there. Trying, you know, definitely going out there, forcing Orion to move back. Ron having a little bit of a snap out there. Zar bought 
full flow of their bouncing blades continuously going out. Volley will keep him a little bit at bay, but Javan's on top with Caitlyn. Just biding his time before he makes anything happen there. It looks like first blood will go to Za out there. Oh, no, in fact, doesn't Capuchu, um, Capuchu, you're the end of you now. <gasps> no, in fact, he does survive. Mm, oh, oh, really? <laughs> Sylvia misses the ignite onto Za earlier just now. That's yeah. why he did not get the kill. So that's quite sad. But you can see right now, DP just bullying everyone all over and out. Only while Ron. All the lanes are getting bullied out. Uh, the only thing that's actually working slightly to the favor is Ron because he's hiding within the bush. So. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So here we see Toy is going to be able to make it out safely. Definitely, little boss actually can counter jungling. Is going to be very strong and safe. So no problems happening over there. Jungle effect does connect onto the other end. Uh, and we're going to see here Stanley on top there. Apathy brought very low. Will flag toss away. Um, so relatively safe on the other side. There, Ron steps on the trap. Takes a little bit of a pacemaker. The edge of it. But she did start off with nine pots, I believe, and one ward. So she's going to be overall, she's going to be fine. Yep, she still has six wards up there. Lil Panda taking a beating from Toys. Every single time the slow comes up from Toys, he's definitely pushing Lil Panda back further and further away. In the bottom lane, a lot of aggression still coming out on the other end. Stanley doing a good job every time, uh, not only she's freezing his lane, but every time Caitlyn, um, sorry, Katarina decides to move in a little bit closer, She's heavily punished with every single shot that comes out. So every CS you take, you take a shot to the face at the same time. Mm -hmm. well, definitely going to be very interesting to see how will this plays out because Stanley does have the early game advantage but when Ron wishes to stick, he does have the barrier up and ready as well as his net. It's interesting to see all the plays coming on from everywhere. Oh, pacemaker just missing just by a hair there. Um, but look at this, Baby actually doing a fantastic job of not only getting a lot and lot of CS out there, it is 30 to 9. That difference is staggering. Yes. The level 1 fight just now is just. The stun comes out. Boomerang comes out. The. Oh wow. The exhaust even came out at a glance as well. A lot of summon spells continuously being burnt just to make sure that the kills are either being land or getting away. So, um, not only is Mandalay Eagles losing out in farm, but what's going for them is that they're not dying. <laughs> they did not expect the change. I would have to say, overall, well, everything well, else Toys happening. Toys going to go down there, did get slowed just by a hair. Um, Toys, almost out of mana, so Orina will be a little bit happy. Can breathe a little bit easier. Uh, knowing the fact that Toys can be that aggressive, looks like he will be teleporting away. And... I don't know, it, I mean, look at the top lane. Kaylin is doing an amazing job, does have about a 10 CS lead. Pushing down the tower, poking it away just by a little bit there. Ron has a Capuchu, looks like maybe the first one there. Terry gets the first blood there, securing the kill on the other end. Javan coming in though, will Javan be able to make something happen at the bottom? We do see the slow, but no, looks like it will be a turnaround. Apathy, no mana whatsoever, why are you there? Um, Hawkshot will catch Dinter out, so just to make sure that, you know what? Telling you I know where exactly you are, you can't actually come and stun me. Ron shampooing away just in time. Lil Boss like will be getting something out. Zah brought very low. Baby brings it down with the ignite. We do see the onslaught coming in from the top there. Lil Balls and Ron still going at it. Well it's just it's just a total bullying of every single lane right now by the South DPA. I mean just if I'm not six minutes <laughs> almost yes. a three K goalie. Yes, yes. That's massive. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, just slowly, slowly, slowly building up two kills, and look at the CS difference over the map. It's just so much controlled by the side of DPA. And we did mention, you know, I said we we're talking about Caitlyn and Ash. You know, Ash will do fine, but because you know, severe punishes low mobility champions so much, especially with a single target stun with Tarek. The combination is like stun, boomerang blade, stun, boomerang blade, bouncing blade straight away. Mm -hmm. It's just. It, it, it's, it's, too much, it's, it's too much. It's too much to handle simply because Tarik doesn't have his shatter up to a very high level, so you still are getting a lot of damage being taken out. Uh, people are saying, "Oh my God, severe with Cookie is that like for serious?" But guess what? It's working so well out there. The slow does come out though, but oh, forced to flash away. Uh, I think a little bit of a um, panic. Oh, no, yeah. Not really, because uh, if you don't, you didn't flash away, toys can easily just continue diving with intervention. As well, the flash he is up and ready. That so is right. I did safe. notice that in fact, uh, he is already having the intervention out there. So very, very quickly. Jeez. Here we see Ron trying to dive in, but instantly Shumpo's onto a trap. Great positioning by the south. Little balls does get caught out though. Uh, 
not actually being able to connect to a kill. They do see toys coming on the other side there, being a boss. Oh, look at Apathy taking a huge chunk out there. Lil Panda now in the line of fire. Apathy does get taken out. Lil Panda will get taken out. Capuchu possibly going to be taken out. The slow does come off. The ultimate of Severe does run it's out. Easy. Toys will definitely be. Oh no, in fact, Bebe does get the kill out. The intervention does come out. I was just there to tank the turret. I'm like, okay, time to intervention and walk out safely. It looks like they could be diving onto Ash right now. It is a 5 and 0. Oh, 4k clear goal lead at 8 minutes. Jeez. Wow. Uh, once again, Toy is tanking the turret for Zao on the other end there. Oh, Severe will pick up the kill yet again. Baby doing an excellent job. The ultimate does get thrown out by Tarek at the same time. With the minions help out there, they will be able to get this tower. No problem. A-OK. -okay. Oriana goes back to the mid lane. And what can Manila Eagles do? This, <laughs> I mean, we were talking about this earlier already. Like, who cares about the team fights if the lane dominance is crazy? And look at that. Just by pitching the ten minutes soon, just in fifty more seconds, there is a six k goal difference, six kills, one tower on a set of TPA, total dominance. Top lane Stanley with seventy CS against Karatina forty six. Even jungle side, you know, Nunu does have the advantage twenty seven CS in twenty two. He just kills jungle camp so quickly. He just walk around and be a boss move as he please. And we can see kill almost completely in Nasha stuff and 65 CS and Orena 51. Here, look at the top engage right there. Orena is coming to secure it, but see, look at the perfect flash from Stanley. And he might be able to get a kill onto Ron, but nope, he doesn't have enough mana. He not have the free kill right there. And look at this. And he's trying to respawn with something, trying to gank, but still. Still being punished happened. everywhere yeah. they go. He's getting punished and pushed back wherever they go. Look at Dinter against Apathy. Dinter, who is the support, has a higher level than the jungle. <laughs> On the other end there, uh, in not, fact, has more life than Javan as well. And not only that, we see that Ash is forced to buy a cloth armor in another Doran's bit, doesn't have the boots yet, and the side of DB is like, I have a blood thirster. Look at his capture being caught out, that Severe almost gonna get it out. The kill there, the spell should just come out just in case the shampoo was gonna go on to her, or the bouncing blade itself, but... I believe the boomerang blade gosh. hit Javan at the same time. I'm not sure of the range just now, whether Javan was a bit behind or in front, but I think that Oh, Ron, bye bye, out. Ron. Apathy going down at the same time. Uh, Dint attacking the tower just a bit. Double kill comes out there. They will be able to bring down the first turret. The second turret will go down like butter to a hot knife. There's nothing much that Mother Eagles can do about this. They either need to regroup or catch somebody out. Look at the aggression, the attack speed coming out from the side of TPA. The Blood Thurster being up, Nashatu's almost up and ready, and the Blood Boy combination right there, just chunking on the tower like no tomorrow. It it and was a 9 minute bloodthirster. And, and it's the same like 11 minutes, 3 towers. And they're gonna push oh in my directly. And it's oh, the ultimate does come out. Dinta being possibly caught out there. Apathy on the other side there. Look at the amount of return damage is coming out. Toy is gonna go all the way in. Ron on the other side there. Stun does come out. Dinta is still very broad, very low. Absolutely zero will not connect to anybody. A minion has destroyed a red turret. Caitlyn up there. It's played free. by Stanley. Um, another turret she possibly could take yet another one they are going to shuffle themselves down to the bottom lane going to take down the bottom turret at the same time it's going to be 9-0 perfect score 4 and 0 turrets as well 10k goal difference in 11 minutes which in the top 1k goal okay. difference every single minute of the game <laughs> that went out there Almost that is dominance wow and look at itself it is like Staring <laughs> has a Rubik's side stole, but he didn't even really plot a single ward because they're like, okay, let's go, let's yeah, go, let's go, let's just die. Area of the enemy, they don't need to know where they are because they are in base. Uh, looks like toys that are putting a little bit of hurt on <laughs> the side of Manila Eagles. And the interesting uh, uh, item itemization is actually on the side of Stanley. He has 4k gold, but he went for upgrading the boots first, Berserker Gifts and Alacrity because he really wants to just stay safe, so to speak, and move away from dangerous situations as much as he can. And the three ones being picked up right there, just... Wow, look at him, just bullying Ron so much. Ron does have a chain vest and a cloth armor, but that's not going to that, be That's enough. not enough. Doesn't, once again, MLE going for tanky HP in terms of that because you know they are far behind, but there's no damage there's being no dealt damage. out there. Uh, I would say almost close to what Kel Hunter said, just that it wasn't this much of a beatdown. Um, look at how fast the tower's been taken now. Not only is Bloodthirsters on there, that's a Brutalizer at the same time. Oh, does manage to flash away just in time. 
Lil Boss possibly going to go down, but no intervention comes out. Bebe is godlike at this point in time. Oh, Bebe possibly going to go down. Just shut up. Does come out. Lil Banner will go down in return. So it isn't a flawless game. Bebe. <laughs> I mean, it depends on what to secure the kill so badly, though, because they just need to. They just need to do something, I mean, they can't that, show... That's what that, they need to do. Honestly, uh, the shutdown goal is worth a lot. There's additional 500 gold plus the 300 which you get the kill on. But it's definitely not enough. I mean... It, it's not enough, but it's all these little things that could possibly help them. But Toys bring down yet another turret. I'm, I'm sure you're being optimistic. I, I'm being optimistic that, here. That could possibly help them. But at this point of time, oh, look at that. That he can him off out there. Oh, it's going to be fine. He does have the extra eloquity and the trap being planted right there. Black Javan is missing there the combination because of the actual movement speed oh, that Stanley did have. He's actually going to move back and poke a few more times before falling back. And it's just they are the total top top domination. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, I actually quite speechless. I didn't expect it to be. I know it was going to be a snowballish thing. I didn't expect the level Not 1 aggression much, and yeah. this much. It's like, it's like wow, just totally destroying and. It's so, so demoralizing to see this, I would have to say. Especially if I was in that game, I would, I would like, oh wow, I can't believe this is happening. A lot of people are saying, what is wrong with Manila Eagles? Uh, to be honest, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. It's more like, what in the world training is Taipei Assassins doing? They're, coming, they're pulling on ridiculous strats. I would say that they actually wanted to maybe go for Nunu Caitlyn composition. But then once they saw that Za went for the Ash, they're like, you know what, we can do this. We like, can do this. Let's just change it to Sivir and Tarek. We're going to dominate the bot lane because Ash is just squishy and she needs the levels to be a bit more, they do a bit more damage. And oh, Sivir just like level it's going to be a 15 minute Baron. Everybody's grouping up already. Wow, look at this. They're even waiting <laughs> right now. actually Pearl Boy is only at level 1, Ice Boy at level 4, and Consume at level 2. Oh, so oh, this is going to be a very big Baron. Now. Just 10k HP right there. Being wow. chunked down instantly with the blood ball and overall. I, I the fact that they are still at that. that. Yeah, they're all taking turns to actually get out the, um, the damage on that. Little boss taking a little bit of <laughs> damage does eat up the last bit of Baron. And oh my god, they are in such a commanding position at this time. Mother Eagle tied in your base. <laughs> and look at that, Tarek did not even need to get a GP10 item. He, 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 he has, he's so fat. Wait for oh, the rupee yeah. size for oh. boost of ability and upgrading to home guard. Just like push, return, push, return, push. Just it, domination. It reminds me of like the 1950 movies where it's like invasion of the giant cockroach and things like that. Where like people in the village are screaming and like they can't do anything. It sure looks that way. It's and not only that, look at this on the side of little boss being a super supportive. Oh, oh look at this going up. One thing even more what. The poke onto the main turrets are going already out there. Wow, look at how fast turrets are going down. This is a 16 minute game. This is not like as if when you have been playing for 40 minutes and you have massive items. Mm. This is already at 16 minutes. Blood this is just killing with 3 tons and 3 tons of damage. It looks like Kill's going for Gwinston's Rage Blade at the same time. Pick has all there. Um, Ultimate does get thrown out. Very big jump and falls down. Zah now in a very big position. Ron possibly going to bring somebody down. No, in fact, oh, look at that. Suddenly just pops. His barrier and perfectly fine. Double kill coming out there. Does take a little bit of beating though, but guess what? This is this is a TPA gonna beat the record for the fastest game for GPL today. Uh, I think the fastest game right was at 18 minutes. This is not gonna be a 17, less than 17 minutes. Just oh, it's gonna be 16 minutes and about 50 seconds. 16 minutes and 51 One, seconds right there. 52 seconds. Once the victory came wow. up, 60 minutes and 52 seconds. Just dominating. Mind blown. <laughs> yes. Like. Oh gosh, it's like unbelievable. We're going to have a quick look at the score screen uh, right here just to show you guys in case you guys were not following up on look the like, itemization. Wow. If you look at it, you'll be, you be like, you'll be like shocked. Like, it looks like this, they, they kind of AFK'd. Oh, yeah, it's like the AFK game right there. So let's go back to the score screen. You can see the large difference that only one kill, 14 right there, 40 kills for self TP, one kill on self MLE. 2.6, 2.7k goal <laughs> on the sides there. The highest goal is 3.9, the highest goal is 8k. That's double the amount of goal that's coming up up there. Massive difference. Huge, huge things. There's nothing much to mention about this. It's just total uh, game domination.
No GP tens needed. Why can't I get people like this in my rank game? <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> they they don't exist on our more like it. Only exists I mean, in TPA. Good job, the TPA there. I mean, showing us how it's done. I mean, a lot of people think, you know, like a boss, like a boss. This it was really like a boss, the absolute domination. I want there. to mention one thing before they pushed out for the 15 minute Baron, Caitlyn actually had a uh, bigger sentence as well. Yep, so it did help out a lot more.